Hi there, this is my survivor guide to Freedom Wars. The purpose of this guide is to inform you what this game has, besides the fact that it looks like yet another Monster Hunter clone. Except with an actual story involved, AI support for offline and online, and a nice character customization. Then there's the different type of weapons, guns, the type of thorns you will be using, giving commands to your allies and accessories and so on. I will do my best to cover as much as I can in Freedom Wars. <laughs> There are four different attack types, impact, projectile, piercing, and cutting. You're given the choice of short blade, long blade, pole arm, and your second weapon are the guns. Short blade is my favorite weapon of choice in most action related games. While it's not as powerful as a heavy blade, it also serves a very useful purpose of cutting body parts of the abductors. This strategy is a must if you want to get an upper advantage with an abductor carrying heavy firepower. It's also the only weapon that is used for cutting the cage for trapped citizens and accessories. If you hold the short attack button or the power button, you will perform a charge attack and can do a follow up after it. For those who don't know, if you keep slashing with the short and strong attacks, you will get a small combo going. Longblade is very handy at taking down abductors but it will slow you down due to the amount of weight you are carrying. I prefer the Long Shadow, the Cali Burn, and of course, the Excalibur. But the other Long Blades are just as great. Being a Short Blade user, I wasn't sure if I was going to like using the Long Blade, but I love it. It does require time and patience that your slash attacks will be slow, obviously. But the charred attacks make up for it. While the Long Blade is good at breaking up Doctor's parts for farming purposes, you have to also keep in mind you're taking down their HP at the same time. The pole arm is mentioned by other players to use against other sinners due to its range. Trying to hit a sinner with a long blade isn't worth it, but the short blade is pretty good at it. You also can't forget the pole arm dash attack. Just be warned that dash attack isn't always reliable. Spirit throwing shows how effective his piercing can be. It's pretty effective against abductors, especially when you're up close or standing from afar with a spear throw. Assault weapons are your standard guns. As shown in the weapons description, its effect is a little weak against other sinners, but it's also pretty handy against abductors. The portable artillery are going to have more of an impact than the assault weapons, such as the AAW M2 and Nambu MK25, for an example. They are useful in dealing with abductors and also push back sinners. The only drawback, just like the auto cannon weapons, is that they will slow you down due to their weight. Auto cannons are handy against abductors and sinners. The phalanx is effective against cutting abductors with its laser beam. And then there's the Adele ring, which is a flamethrower, which you may have seen being used against other sinners. Both have a slow startup, and of course, the weight of the auto cannon will slow you down. The sniper rifle is a good weapon against abductors that have a weakness for pierce damage. Due to the amount of ammo you're given, every shot counts, as reloading a certain amount of rounds will hold you back a little. You can also make your equipment stronger by upgrading and modifying them from collecting resources and combining weapons. There are other in-depth guides that further explain this, but just a reminder that when you combine weapons together, there is a chance that the results might not turn out as what you expected. It's probably a good idea to always back up your Freedom Wars save file if you don't feel like risking it all or don't want to waste resources, especially for the rare resources. Augmentations are a must have if you want to have an upper advantage in the battles. Certain augmentations will boost your attack, defense, your speed, and a bunch of other things that can help making the battles go much smoother. You will notice a major difference once you have the augmentations equipped. Now, I bet you're wondering, which is the best weapon or setup? It really depends on what weapon you would favor more or would feel comfortable with. Teaming up with different players online, I've noticed a lot of spear users, some heavy blade users, and a few short blade users, and some just want to use their fang legs. It just depends on what works for you and what is your playing style. Since I'm used to playing as a tank and try to separate abductors from the other team, I stick to light weapons so I'm able to move around. Ah! 
変ヘルス事ン実行バイダンの提案を確認回復を提案しますはい。Hone it down long enough will create a small area to be protected from gunfire, but only for a limited time. Healing Thorn, as you can already guess, is used to help heal your party members. You can also create a healing spot for the rest of your teammates instead of healing one person at a time. You can run up to your teammates and heal them, or use your thorn to target them and still heal them from afar. A very useful tip when reviving your party members you can use your thorn and target them, but keep in mind you will use up some of your borrow when you do this. As you are well aware from the very start, your accessory is your 24 7 surveillance. Thankfully, it is your most trusted ally in battle. Give your accessory a gun of any kind, and they will never run out of ammo. I am still curious how they have infinite ammo, but I'm not complaining. You are given commands to your accessory, which can really be helpful in battle, especially if your hands are full taking down enemies. For example, you can have them carry the civilian or have them revive you or your allies. Be mindful of what weapon you give your accessory. While giving them a portable artillery weapon is great for helping taking down abductors, it's also extra weight for the accessory and slows them down when it comes to arriving you. And one last thing to remember about your accessory while your accessory is your best ally in battle, as mentioned before, there's also the risk of them getting captured by an abductor and trapped inside of them. If you don't get your accessory out before the time limit is over, your accessory is gone. The good thing is, you can recover it later on in a separate mission. And getting it back is pretty easy. If you have rescued another player's accessory online, their accessory will be a part of your spare accessories list and can assist you in rescuing your own accessory. A similar feature that was done in God Eater Burst, except that had a certain player controlled by AI for support. So basically, the same thing in Freedom Wars with another player's accessory. <laughs> ただいま戻りました。あなたの監視任務に復帰します。期間時にこちらのアイテムを回収しました。お受け取りください。Always watch abductors and how they move. The T type or the slashing robot tiger will always try to run at you. If you see him roar, there's a chance he's going to try and grab you with its mouth. Try to stay out of its sight if possible. As for the spider, besides the fact it's annoying and likes to jump all over the place. Try to keep your distance if possible. But if you have good and strong equipment on you, try to get rid of it immediately. It has an annoying habit of ruining missions when it joins with other abductors. The tall and walking abductor is a threat at close range. It will try to smack you away, pound you in the ground with its giant fist, grab you, shoot lasers, and then try to stomp you to pieces. If you see him approach you and he has his fists ready up in the air, you can try and run underneath him and go behind him. Keep in mind, this won't always work. If you see him get ready to stomp, it's probably a good idea not to stand underneath till he stops jumping up and down. Be aware of your surroundings. You can have the upper advantage if you make use of cover or be able to get out of the enemy's range. For those who are wondering or already know, it is possible to decrease your sentence to zero years. I could say from my experience that it would take a while depending on what you do. The fast method is by joining online with other players and doing special missions and retributions and having the contribution booster augmentation equipped. 
If you have a really bad connection or just don't want to do a multiplayer, there's also the manufacturing resources method. Thanks for watching this Sinner's Survival Guide for Freedom Wars. As you may have noticed or already know, there are also other video guides that have covered what I mentioned in this video. And that's fine. It's always been a hobby of mine to make video guides to help other players. I'm glad there are videos for Freedom Wars out there. It shows that this game has gotten a lot of love from Vita fans. And I'm glad to see Freedom Wars getting around. I only cover just a certain amount of what Freedom Wars has to offer. This survival guide is not meant to be a go-to database. Or teach you how to survive and pass the infamous Code 8 exam. But there are websites out there that are pretty useful. Shout out to the Twitch Freedom Wars streamers and the people in their chats. It's been fun chatting with you all. It's because of you guys that make multiplayer experience even more fun. Thank you.